Fitness today for this quick look at the next two figures from the Hellfire Gala. We are going to look at Wolverine, number four, and Polaris, number five from this set. Let's get right to it. All right, first up is Wolverine. Uh, the sculpt, at least the digi digital rendering, uh, looks very cool. And let's take a look at her card, see what she does, and what power she has. Okay, now like the other figures in this set, if you haven't seen those earlier videos, check it out on our channel or on the uh, playlist. What she has, just like every other figure in the set, is Hellfire Gala. Once per turn for all characters with this trait, when a friendly character with the X-Men keyword attacks, and the attack rule includes exactly one five, you may replace the other die with a five. Okay, now when you roll 2d6 for one of those to come up as a five, it's a basically about uh, one third of a chance of that happening. Uh, she also has the high fashion trait. Each one of these figures' high fashion trait is slightly different. What hers is, is high fashion, thigh high leather, leather boots, and black leather, leather opera gloves. Uh, and on the sculpt, it relates to their high fashion trait on each one of the figures. So as you can see, she does have thigh high leather boots and black leather opera gloves. What that trait does is when a friendly character with the X Men keyword hits and two fives, was ruled after resolutions heal that character two clicks okay and that's whatever friendly character doesn't have to be her she could use it for herself or any others uh, if you field a team of these figures and you get one of those fives turn it into a second five then you have the two fives being ruled all of these high fashion traits are going to trigger off of that so all kinds of things could happen uh based off of a 10 two fives being rolled. Okay, now that teams up with her special attack power, which is throughout her dial, which is blades, claws, fangs, but they use it when targeted more than one character, and she must roll a D6 for each hit target. That on itself is super good, but uh, it goes on to also do, when Wolverine hits, after resolutions, heal her one click, for each opposing character that took damage from that attack. As you can see on her dial, she's going to have three targets. So potentially, she hits with one attack, she can target three people up close. So she hits those three people, she rolls one five in that roll, then she can uh, replace the other die with a five, which makes it a ten. So then her high fashion kicks in, so she, if she hits all three, she could then heal two clicks after resolutions with the high fashion trait, and then from her special attack power, heal one click for each opposing character that took damage. So that's a potential five healing with that one triple target close attack. Now, even better, these figures are just uh, crazy, uh, all of the ones that we've looked at so far. You'll notice on her dial, she comes in at 100 points or 45 points. For 100 points, you get nine clicks. For 45 points, you get five clicks. But the movement power is hypersonic. So she can hypersonic in, triple target, blades, and then all that other stuff triggers. Paired up with that on the top clicks of either starting line is exploit weakness. So hypersonic, blades, triple target, exploit. For 100 points, you get that for six clicks. For 45 points, you have it on your top two clicks. And then she has uh, combat reflexes as her defense, so she's going to be pretty tough to hit. The healing that happens on uh, her various powers and traits is going to keep her alive. And then paired with all of that is at the end of her last three clicks, she has regen. So it's going to be a figure that's going to be pretty hard to deal with, has a lot of chances to, to heal, has a decent uh, reach, being able to hypersonic in seven or six, and then triple target. Uh, damage output is great with that uh, blades, with the exploit, even better. Uh, so super good for the point investment, in my opinion. All right, let's look at the next one. Okay, coming up next is Polaris. She's number five in this set. Let's take a closer look at her. OK, 
Okay, her high fashion trait is translucent silicone dress, and her sculpt would uh, reflect that translucent silicone dress is what it appears that she has. Her high fashion trait is when a friendly character with the X-Men keyword hits and 5-5 five, five was rolled. After resolutions, choose a character within range and place that character up to two squares away from the square they currently occupy. Okay, before we dive in deeper, because this uh, figure has a bunch of cool stuff also, let's just break that down real quick. When the two fives are rolled, choose a character within range and place that character up to two squares away from the square they currently occupy. So when we break that down, it doesn't mean that it has to be the character that was hit. It just triggers off of a friendly character with the X-Men keyword having the two fives in their role. Then she can choose a character within range, friendly or opposing, place them two squares away from the square they currently occupy. So uh, a bunch of repositioning, no line of fire needed for that high fashion trait, can be opposing or friendly, doesn't have to trigger off of her hit, uh, so a bunch of stuff going on in there. Okay, she also has a special attack power is throughout her dial, which is telekinesis. Telekinesis is free. When Polaris uses it, she may instead target an opposing character she hit this turn. We're going to look at that uh, in a little bit more detail because that uh, is pretty darn cool. But let's take a look at her dial. She comes in at 75 points or 40 points. For 75 points, you're getting eight clicks of life. For 40 points, you're getting four clicks of life. She has a six range dual target. She has force blast in her movement uh, power. She has the special attack power that we just looked at. Down her dial, she has energy shield deflection as her defense, making those 17s into 19s from range and making that uh, two clicks of 18 into 20 from range. And then she has outwit in her damage slot on everything except for the last click. Okay, now let's break down with the with the way telekinesis now works. You usually can't target a opposing character, but if for the players that have been around for a little bit, it is different than what you might automatically think. Oh, it's going to be like old TK, but no, TK is now different. So let's take a look. So telekinesis currently is you give your character a power action, minimum range six. Place one target friendly single base character or object within range and line of fire into another square within range and line of fire. Okay, and then it tells you uh, the other parts of it, how many squares, all that. But you'll notice here, there's no uh, attack roll or anything else. So it's just place one target. Okay, the friendly would then uh, become opposing character is her option with her special attack power. So when Polaris uses it, she may instead target an opposing character she hit this turn. So this is cool in a couple different ways. She has six range dual target. She could, maybe they're already within her range. So she hits them with an attack, doesn't need to necessarily damage them. So if they have something like um, impervious where they can roll out and take no damage, doesn't matter as long as they were hit then she can just place one of those targets. It's not another attack roll or anything else. Now, the other thing here is if you get her something that gives her some type of free attack, like free in cap or maybe a free ranged attack of some sort, then that free attack can happen. She can hit. She can then use telekinesis and she can use telekinesis as free and both of those on opposing characters. So she could really uh, reposition an opposing character to your advantage. And we're going to break that down real quick here too. Again, uh, super value for 75 or 40 points for what she could do uh, on a team build. And let's do one quick example of that. Okay, taking a look at her on an actual map. We have her, we have Doom as the opponent across the map there. Uh, she could Let's say she does have free in cap. Doom's already within range. She does her free in cap range attack and hits. Now she can do her telekinesis as a free action and pull him over here next to her. 
Then she could take a power action TK and throw Dr. Doom back there to the rest of her team into kill box setup or whatever else you, you uh, plan up on your side. And that's just one quick example. You can also use it to reposition all kinds of different ways. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this quick look at these figures. Uh, we still have a couple more to go through, so keep an eye on the channel for those upcoming videos. And then for additional in-depth breakdowns like this quick one where we looked at how they play out on the battlefield, we're going to be doing more of that with this set also. All right, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Check it out. If you dig what we do, go ahead and like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.